If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. And Okay, so you wouldn't think it, but this is my 20th year in education. Um, I've worked as a classroom teacher, an instructional coach, a STEM specialist, a media coordinator, and a district ITF. This year, I switched gears, and I am an AIG specialist, uh, mostly serving K-5, and I have a day where I also work with high schools. Um, I am a native of North Carolina, and you can see I am trying to go and get degrees from every North Carolina university there is. <laughs> my latest adventure is working on my school administration, my MSA, and I will finish that um, in July of 2025. I am a per active participant and have been for the past seven years of NC Bold. That is how I met Brandy this past year. So our agenda for today is, what do you think? I'm going to uh, let you weigh in and describe one word that comes to mind when you think of differentiation in just a minute. We're going to have a brief introduction, and then we're going to talk about my favorite magic school, but we're also going to talk about school AI and DFIT, and then um, discuss how you can use this within your role in education. So um, if you have this presentation already pulled up, you can click on the picture, how would you describe differentiation in one word, or you can type in um, t.com and use the code there, and um, 520-6894, and that should let you in to Menti into Mentimeter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to show you what Mentimeter looks like on the teacher side. So here it is. And once I start getting participants to go into Mentimeter, I hope everything is working for y'all, um, you will start to see words populate. Okay, so I'm just refreshing my results here. So access, personal level, inclusive, absolutely all of those. Anything else? You can also type it in the chat if you don't want to use Mentimeter. Accessibility, personalization, yes, all of those things. And the larger the word gets, that means the more people are repeating the words. So some of the words are small and some of them start to grow as they are added. So there is a free version of Mentimeter and I have always used the free version. I do not have a lot of students. So I am going to preface this. This works great if you don't have a lot of students. However, they do cap it. Um, I believe a high school teacher told me that you can't have, she has like 75 students and you can only have 50. So please be mindful if you use the freemium um, that there is a limit. Again, I don't have that limit. Um, I work with smaller groups of students, um, but it is a great way to kick off your lesson or even just do an SEL check-in. So yes, needs, purposeful, planning personal level, all of those. So I'm going to go back in to my presentation and just talk a minute about what is differentiation. Now, working in the AIG field, I have learned a lot about the official definitions. And so this is one of those official definitions is that it's instruction and curriculum that offers students materials and work of varied levels of difficulty with different levels of assistance and may include various types of grouping as well as the classroom environment. I do think it is very difficult in the classroom environment to be able to differentiate every single assignment um, because it takes 
a lot of practice. Naturally, we teach to the middle or we teach to the low. Very rarely are we teaching to the high. So that is something that I think everyone has to work on. Um, what does it look like? So differentiation is very different from rigor, and a lot of people get those confused. But differentiation can look like extending, enriching, or accelerating the standard course of study. For example, if I know that my students are working on a unit like fifth grade volume, then I know that I'm going to, when I have them, I'm going to have them working on projects or activities that are above what they would learn in the classroom. You can also do compacting, tiered assignments, Socratic seminars. Those have been around for a long time. Project and problem-based learning, individual contracts, or higher order inquiry or discussion. And I know that's a lot. And you may say, this would take me forever. And I don't have forever to sit and do these all of these things in my lesson plans. And that is the beauty of where AI comes into play. And I'm going to tell you with very um, levels of what you were teaching I think it's a little bit easy, more easy for high school because you have a zoned in content area unless you're teaching multiple subjects. But with magicschool.ai, and I will tell you that is my favorite AI resource. Sometimes I will go to chat GPT, but if I need to ask a question, I usually answer, I usually ask Raina, who is the chat bot inside of Magic School AI. So if you click on the underlined magic school, that should take you to the homepage and you can go ahead and you can sign up for a free account. That is a freemium also, but I am here to tell you that it is an amazing freemium and there is no reason that you would want to upgrade unless you just want every single bell and whistle that's out there. So how are we differentiating with these tools? And I'm going to take you in there in just a minute. I'm just going to briefly go over uh, some of my favorites. So if you are EC and you need help with writing an IEP, then they have an IEP generator that will generate a draft. But of course, that is not going to be personal to your students, but it does give you a draft of, um, I guess you could say, a more enhanced version because sometimes we know when we've taught all day or when we're in the midst of teaching and we have to stop for an IEP meeting, our words don't quite flow as well. So this can help get you started, but of course you have to customize it according to the student with the specific um, goals that they need. For ML and EC, they have vocabulary assistance in magic school. And the one that I like to use is vocabulary based text. I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. And also for ML and EC, there are sentence starters. So they provide sentence starters for anything that you're working on, whether you need a topic, a sentence, an assignment, a standard, it will start the sentences for you. We know a lot of our kids need that scaffolding. They need those graphic organizers. Um, and probably my favorite is the text leveler resources. You can find that in Magic School, but you can also find that in Diffit. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But what I wanted to be able to do was to take you in to magic school and I'm going to show you what it looks like on my end if you do not have an account so it's just going to ask I'm going to log in if not you can sign up for free and it's going to automatically uh, sign me in and you can see that I have the plus version I have the plus version because I am a certified trainer for magic school and so I do get that as an upgrade but the best upgrade is the enterprise, and that is if your school or your district um, has the most elevated account. But this is this is the second tier, but I've also seen the free tier, and it's just as good. 
So some of these I have starred because they are my favorite tools to use. So I'm just going to pull up Text Leveler. And I'm going to show you the exemplar because the exemplar, you can see this is eighth grade, The Great Gatsby. Now you think this is eighth grade. You know that all of your students who are in eighth grade are not reading on an eighth grade level. Some of them need more advanced readings. So you could increase it. Here, I'm going to bump it up to 11th grade and I'm just going to click generate. And then you are going to see how it generates a more sophisticated, longer um, chapter one. And all it's doing is it's just, um, it will either shorten it or it will make it longer depending on what grade level you choose. If you want to edit your prompt, you can go in and edit. So if I want to take it back to third grade, um, just to simplify things and let the kids see what it looks like for that, I know they have to learn on their grade level, but there is nothing wrong with getting them a simpler version of the text to help them understand the grade level text. So this is what it looks like at a third grade level. So you can see it's not as many words. Um, the vocabulary is not as sophisticated. And it's great because you can make a copy of it. It will read it aloud. You can also export it. A lot of times what I will do is I will put it on a Google Doc. So I'll copy and paste and put it on a Google Doc, um, depending on if I've changed anything or not. You can leave it as is, or you can just copy and paste. That's one of those things in AI that it's okay when you're leveling the text to keep it as is. So I'm going to go back out. Um, where my tools are again, and I'm going to look at, we have text-dependent questions. I really like that one. This is the IEP generator, which is great for EC, and um, you can categorize it if you need to. You can be very specific. Let's look at the exemplar for the sake of time. Fourth grade, we're talking about autism. We're talking about the description of their behaviors, their needs, and strengths. So this is personalized. Um, and then this is the draft that it created with measurable goals. But of course, it says review closely before implementation because you really need to personalize this. But it's a great way to get started. And if you don't like what it generated, you can go in and keep asking questions or keep telling it what you want it to do. How can teachers facilitate conversations and initiate interactions using visuals? So then it gives you all kinds of ideas for that. Are there any digital tools or apps that can help? And a lot of the apps, because there are so many and it's hard to keep up with them, Magic School just gives them to you. So it's really awesome and it is a huge time saver. So if nothing else, I encourage you to look at it. If you do not work with students, if you work with adult learners, you still have other tools that you can respond to, professional email, how often do we get a little frustrated, and we write it, and then we're like, oh, let's back up and do something else. Um, a lot of times I put in um, to Raina, the chat bot, I put in there, please make this sound. Um, kind and professional and it's amazing what it will do but if you are content based there are math story word problems there are also spiral reviews and you can um, differentiate all of these choice board is awesome and I'm I do have a couple of activities already created for those that I'm going to share with you Okay, so this is Raina. Raina is definitely my favorite. Um, she's the one that I prefer, and you can ask her anything. And what I like about it, too, is it saves all of your input output. So if you ask it something, it's going to save all suggestions, all edits that you make, everything. Um, choice board, which I just said was great. Project-based learning is awesome too. It will create a full project for you. I know that last year, uh, 
a biology teacher was like, okay, prove to me that this is good for high school. And we sat down, he gave me the topic and I just said, create different modalities within this unit. And it within seconds created a choice board that he liked. Um, It also has an assignment scaffolder. So it will scaffold assignments for you as well. Um, If you want to know more about Magic School, there are certification courses that you can take. So there are level one, two, and three certifications, and you're always going to find that under training. Um, The certification courses take maybe 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how fast you are. Somebody told me I skipped through a couple videos and got finished with it quickly. That is fine if you already know about it. I let the videos play because I'm a little bit of a nerd. And so it took me anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes for each certification. But you do get certificates, you get a badge, and you should ask your administration if you can get CEUs for that. We're currently doing that at one of the schools that I serve. There, And after you get levels one and two, you can apply to become a pioneer. And pioneer just gives you um, an upgrade And it also lets you have kind of the insider information of what they've come out with because the way that this was last year at this time compared to where it is now, they are constantly adding new things. They also have professional development slides, so you really don't have to create anything if you wanted to present this to staff or adult learners, and they do have a YouTube channel that a lot of people um, enjoy seeing how things work. There is also an AI generator through Adobe that I love, but our school district does not support Adobe, so I cannot use it with them, and I'm sad about that, but if your school system or district does support Adobe, then you can use the AI image generator, and it is awesome. Um, I used it this summer with some adults to create um, generators of different like songs. So Purple Rain, what does that look like? And so then we had a little music contest where they were guessing that song. We did some Taylor Swift. Um, So it's just a lot of fun to use. And the students can also create with that. Um, You just want to make sure that you are mindful of their age because that's 13 and up. Now, if you're using the tool with them, it's fine because you are controlling it. But if you want them to create, you've got to be mindful of the age. So now we're going to take a look at School AI, and we're going to look at the co-teacher. And when I first got introduced to School AI, and I don't use this a lot, I was like, I don't know how to find um, the co-teacher part. But the co-teacher part is really nice because here's what it did for me. And this is actually a topic that I'm working on now with some students. Can you help put together a lesson using multiplicative comparisons for gifted students in fourth grade? So it spit this out. Now, am I going to use all of this? No, but it does help me pick out and pull things that I can use, okay? And what I would probably want to integrate into my lesson is any information about the real world scenarios, because that's so important now, and advanced challenges, Um, because a lot of times when the kids are doing what they've learned, that's one thing. But when you start differentiating and getting them involved in advanced things or real world scenarios, that's when they have to stop and think. So if you go into school AI... I've got to move my little box here and hopefully it will let me in without wasting too much time. Okay. I believe that it was okay if I authenticated through Google And if it doesn't let you use your school account, you can always use a personal account. Just FYI, I don't know what districts, what they've blocked and what they have open. But this is kind of your page. 
And I like that it has different topic areas. It's got spooky literature that is great for all grade levels, not just elementary, but they have spaces that you can go into. There's a tool area and then there's an assistance area, which is where you can find co-teacher and that's where you can go in there and you can chat with a bot um, really about anything that you want them to. But what I like about a space is a space is an area where you have a lesson and you can go there and you can also collaborate um, with teachers. But this is a great way, again, to differentiate. And that is also free. It's a freemium, but look at everything you get with a freemium because I'm not paying for anything. I'm just using the free versions of everything. Are there any questions before we move on? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so next we have dip it. And dip it, I feel like is underutilized right now because people are like, there are so many tools out there. This is just another one. And that's why I chose three because I also want to give you a little bit of time to go in and explore one or two of these tools and be able to ask questions about them and just know that I can do magic school with my eyes closed I am not as proficient with school AI and DFIT, but I do love DFIT and it did help me when I was helping a fourth grade teacher last year try to integrate some technology into the classroom. But DFIT, it's basically saying it's differentiating. Okay, that's where the name arrives. That's where the name originates from. So no matter what, they're going to have it and they're going to have real cited sources. You're going to be able to choose national standards, grade levels. You can choose from different languages, um, and it will create a dif differentiated resource for you. Um, you get to customize it when it creates it. If you look at it, like some of the things I've looked at, I'm like, this is way too overwhelming, way too many activities. You can customize and take out what you don't want. But I do love that it will instantly relevel text, customize the vocabulary, add questions according to the uh, depth of knowledge levels. It will translate. It's just, it's everything. And I would say that DFIT is better for your upper grades. And when I say upper grades, I mean looking at grades three and up. Um. You start, basically, this is like kind of the tree map. So you start with the standard, standard, you pick your grade level and language, and you make sure that resource is just right. So then you can export it. You can, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. You can regenerate, which I also did with what I'm going to share with you. Um, you can translate it for those bilingual students, and everything is just you're able to export with it. And I'll tell you the other thing I love about DFIT. I don't see that it shares with Canvas, but it does share with Google Classroom. And I use Google Classroom with my third, fourth, and fifth graders. Um, high school uses Canvas, so it's a little bit different. But I can share it right through the site um, with DFIT. So first off, I want to share with you this high school example. And Katie Boggle, if you don't know her, you should give her a follow on X, um, which used to be Twitter, which I now call Twix. Um, if you're still on Twitter or X, I give her a follow because she is phenomenal. And she also has done NC Bold with me. And I love the way she, she's a librarian and how she naturally differentiates because she's always got that, that gifted and that EC lens. Because I think when you're in the library, especially at the high school level, you're working with everyone <clears throat> when they have um, certain projects that they come in and work on. So you're going to see here, the three different readings. Um, there's the support level, there is the mid-level, 
and there is the extension. So I know you can't see that, but you can see um, that they took an excerpt of each, the same paragraph, and you can see how it grows from support to mid to extension. And I'll give you just a second to look at those. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to ask Brandy if she will in the chat if you guys or you can come off, I think you can come off mute um and talk just what do you notice about the scaffolding as it goes from support to mid to extension? Is anyone saying anything? Not yet. Not in the chat. <laughs> okay. One thing that I notice as I go from one to the next is just the level, the length, and the vocabulary, mm -hmm. and the complexity, the depth and complexity, which we know that those kids who need an extension need, but we also know that our support level, it needs something that doesn't have all the sophisticated um, vocabulary, and it is shorter. So all of those activities were made in DFIT within a couple of minutes, just changing the reading levels. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you in to Diffit. Oh, it wants me to do. And so it says I have free trial access to Diffit premium fixtures until December 9th. So that's awesome. So right now I'm using it um, for different tops, topics. And you can see that I have my resources. So this is what I did the other day. I knew that fourth grade had just wrapped up moon phases. So I did a fourth grade level of what my resources would look like if I was using a true fourth grade level. Okay. So you can see the different activities that I can do. I can do a three, two, one. I can do a read and take notes. I can do an answer and explain. I can do short answer, or I can do reflect and discuss. And you can choose whatever activities that you want to. I really like, if I don't use anything with Diffit, I really like the notice and wonder part. What do you notice? What do you wonder? I think that's a great way to start anything out. Okay, so that was the fourth grade level. So then I came in and I used the same resource, but now I've put it on a second grade level. So you can see the three, let me show you the notice and wonder. Still the same thing. Um, I've got my key vocabulary, my read and take notes, but the reading is completely on a different level. My answer and explain, I like the way it even asks to give more details. Why did you pick that answer? And the short answer questions, um, those are your more, they're not going above and beyond. They are just simply short answer questions. They're either right there answers or, you know, they're just, thinking about them and then reflect and discuss and you can do that you can customize those you can do that however you want to now one thing that I did I did this introduction activity with adult learners and so it was basically talking about icebreakers and I know some of you cringe when you hear that word icebreaker but I just wanted to show um, some adult learners, what they could do with it. And you can see they've got different um, techniques. Here we've got the bubble map. So if you remember the thinking maps, maps from long ago, they do have all kinds of graphic organizers that you can use. 
they can put the vocabulary in a different format. Okay, I can adjust my reading anytime I want to. And then I did one for American Revolution, and this was to give kids the experience of um, trying to use Google Slides on their iPad, because sometimes that can be different. If you're an Apple user, you know how that goes. Sometimes Apple does not play well <clears throat> with um, Google. So I turned this in to, and it says, get or, and then I can go through and I can get the basics. I can do summarizing. I can choose whatever I want. So if I want to export that, notice it gives me the options to do it in slides, um, PowerPoint, or as a PDF. Okay. I personally like the digital versions, but you know, you have to do what is best for your students. So we have about 15 minutes left and I do have some wrap up things that I want you to do so I don't want you to leave and I know sometimes you lose people when you give them playtime but I want you to choose one or you can look at two of these tools for yourself and I want you to go in and see what you can do to differentiate something it can only be one thing it can be a small topic or it could be a large topic but just go in um and create something. I'm going to give you probably about seven minutes. And this can also be a time where you just ask questions and we can go into the tools together. Now, again, not an expert with Diffit or School AI. We would be learning together with those tools. So I know some people want um, time to work or they just want to talk and ask questions. So if I don't hear anything, then I know that you are exploring. Hey, Leslie, I was just going to say that I love that Diffit uses the edu, the, um, edu protocols for their yeah. student activities. Yes, and I love edu protocols too. That could be a whole nother session. And while you, you are exploring, if you want to take the time to click on the Padlet, this Padlet link is actually going to take you to a Padlet. I, am, I love Padlet, and I'm going to tell you that Padlet is even better. Once Jamboard, um, well, it will be no more, I think, after the end of the year, but you can't create active Jamboards anymore. But I love that now... Um, Padlet has kind of taken over and they have all kinds of AI built into um, their tool too. So what you can do is just go into that and talk about how you would use AI to differentiate learning. And what I love is that if you create something, you can also upload it or link it. You can take a picture of it. Um, you can do image searches inside of Padlet. And there's also AI, the I can't draw. If you want it to generate an image for you, it will do that now. So Padlet has come a long ways. And I do subscribe, so this Padlet is not going away. If you have used the tools also, you can talk about how you have used them. Leslie? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Tanya Monroe Leach. I'm from um, Western Griffith High School in Greensboro. I'm a media specialist. Mm -hmm. And 
I have used Magic um, School AI and School AI. I have been certified in both of them. But um, I love Magic School better. <laughs> it's my favorite. And um, I was able to just now finish up a lesson where I have one for my ninth graders, a digital storytelling, where they were able to videotape a... Um, a collaborate group videotape a book that they read together mm -hmm. and, I, and it provided me a rubric. Then I differentiated it for a adaptive class of students who have autism and mental disabilities. That's awesome. And provided a rubric for that too. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it did that within just a matter of seconds. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I and wish I had this when I started school. When I right. started <laughs> I know back when I started, which was a long time ago, I don't even like to say when I started, but I would spend hours doing things like that on the weekend. And now it happens so fast. And that's the other thing when you mentioned rubrics, that rubric rubrics are a great way also for the kids to have accountability of their own learning mm -hmm. and learning to provide feedback for others. Yeah, because it was talking about for my ninth grade lesson for them to have peer to peer feedback. So mm -hmm. I'm providing the rubric to the peer um, for the to the peers for them to be able to provide feedback for each other before they give it to me to be graded. And then we're going to have a um, presentation day where we show off the videos. Oh, I love it. I wish I could be there to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have um Groovy jellyfish, and they give you anonymous names. Definitely using Diffit to take a passage and create different reading levels of the same passage. I also love using ma Magic School with my students. I love that I can assign what tools they will use. So that brings up a good point with Magic um, School also, is that now you can see that I'm in the Magic School side, but I can also go in to the magic student side. And here's my student room. And I use my personal children as an example because my the, the students that I teach and would actively use this with um, are under 13, but I used my children. And so what I did is they're active. And if they produce anything, I can take a look at that but I can also remove them from the room. Um, I can pause them. I can lock them from using it. So we talk about teaching AI students. Uh, we talk about when we teach AI to make them use it responsibly. Otherwise, they're going to do copy and paste and not even realize that they're plagiarizing um, unless they've been taught that. And so this lets you lock down any tools that you don't want them to have. So I'm going to view the tools here. And this shows you the tools that I have allowed them to use and they can't use any other tools. My kids, my personal kids are in high school. So I want them to be able to take a look at how it rewrites things, expands on their ideas, how to use a study bot, an email response responder, because you know their slang gets in the way of them being able to write appropriate emails, how to write a thank you note, that art is lost. Um, they can use the tool to help them and how to proofread things also. So the student side is quite amazing for the older kids and it's very easy to use. Let me see if I have anything else. That's it. Does anyone else have anything that they want to contribute to it? I loved the example of differentiating it for 
um, the adaptive classes. Okay, well, if you haven't, I'm gonna give you a second to go ahead and reflect on the Padlet. How would you use it? Now, even if you're an administrator, even if you're someone at the district level, there are still ways that you could use AI to help um, your adult learners, even if it's just with creating emails. I know today um, I said, should I ask ChatGPT because I needed to word something a nice way? And so that's what I did. I actually went into chat GPT and it reworded something for me beautifully because um, being in grad school, you know, that's writing intensive. So sometimes you need to find a way to say something very PC, I guess is the right word. It also helps for writing posts for Facebook and Instagram too. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. I didn't even think about using it in that way. Something catching for the for the kids in their lingo. Mm -hmm. You know, at my age, I'm out of date. I am too. <laughs> my and teenagers you keep the me social up posts, to date. If you use it for the social media posts, it even puts the emojis and graphics in for you. Really? Yes. I love that. So um, after the Padlet, I have also given you access to look at a novel study because a lot of teachers will ask me um, after the kids read something because I don't assign novels for them because they're going to read what they want to read. I don't decide that for them. But what could they do after they read? And I had Magic School create um a novel study choice board, pretty generic for anything. And I asked it to use a lot of technology um, and for gifted learners, because sometimes they don't pick up on the AIG part. So I just say gifted learners and it created this. I took out a couple of things, but turn a chapter into a graphic novel format. Um, creating a podcast episode, creating a digital collage. And the kids really like the digital collage one. Um, and then anything that they needed help with, then I could take the time to help them in class, um, creating a video trailer. And that's just allowing them to be able to integrate those tech skills seamlessly too. And I did the same thing with fourth grade. And then here, I just wanted to show you the difference between the read and the take notes with the moon phases of fourth grade and of second grade. And you can just look at that at a glance and see the differences. So that is all I have today. So if you don't have any other questions, I just want to say thank you for joining. Um, I believe I, at least I hope I put my email address, uh, leslie.pope at cravenk12.org. Feel free to email me anytime um, if you have any questions or just want to discuss any AI tools to help you differentiate. Thank you so much for coming. Kristen said, thank you. She always enjoys your presentations. Oh, thank you. And Tanya said, thank you so much. Thank you, Tanya. Your ideas were awesome. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>